what y'all think about that what do you think about that um that quote the average do you say person or Christian? The average Christian spends one hour of their week in church. What about the other 167? It's a little humbling. And it also shows you that, like, it's probably somebody's auntie out there who's in church all services and they in there for seven and all the nieces and nephews didn't go at all. So it averages out to one hour a week for all seven of them, but she carried all the weight. That's simple math. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, hey, that's the first time I read that. I was like, I need to talk to God more. Yeah. Or something mean, like that. Like, that's, yeah. that's just, that's real. It is. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I never thought about it being 167 other hours. You know, I just think about, you know, this is the routine. On Sunday, wake up, go to church or tune into church at this point. We're in the middle of pandemic still. But, you know, it is. Uh, now, granted, we do other things, hopefully. Outside of just that hour or two that we spend in church once a week. But, I mean, it kind of also is convicting. I think we talked about that a little bit earlier. Because one hour, you think, I mean, that's not a lot of time. Uh, an episode of Canaan or an episode of Power Book 2 is an hour long. And <laughs> yeah, I'd be true. pressed <laughs> to watch. I mean, seriously, like yeah. to, to sit down. I sit down in a heartbeat and watch that. And so to think about people saying, oh, I couldn't make it to church, it, it really kind of puts your priorities out there. As soon as I heard that 100, I'm like, oh my goodness, 100 167. hours? 167. 167. 167. Hours in a week. It puts my little one hour a day to like shame. Yeah. Um, and it's like not even church. Like you could replace that with spend time with God. You know what I'm saying? Because, But then again, people don't necessarily spend time with God in church. Well, Some people are there for the show. Mm-hmm. Forget, Forget the in church part. I don't know necessarily if the stat changes. If we if we say right, if we say time spent with God, they might be like, "Oh no, nah, that one hour was my time spent with God." Yeah, he got me covered for the week off that one hour. Yeah, yeah. Is it that when it matters the most outside of church? <laughs> yeah, I believe I believe so. I think it just depends on the quality of the time. So whether it's in church or out of church. As long as the time spent was beneficial, yes, you know, I right. think that that's what's most important. It's like you shouldn't, I guess, need church to get closer to God. I mean, you you may need it because there's spiritual leaders, but to actually be in the the building, like coming to the building, doing all the form and fashion, you don't need that to get closer to God. So, I think it helps, think? though. It helps. Yeah, it helps. because now. I, I'm, I don't know scripture word for word, but I think the Bible does say, you know, do not forsake the assembly of the people. Correct. So yeah. obviously, you know, going to church or being in some form of church group or some kind of assembly is vital to your growth. But it sh- I do agree it should not stop with that assembly. So now you got to go on your own. Hopefully now we're getting beyond that one hour that we started the conversation with mm-hmm. and starting to, you know, build our relationship beyond just that assembly on one or two days a week. Gotcha. So let's be transparent. <laughs> How many hours would you say you spend a week with God? Let's be let's be honest. With that. God, one sixty eight. Come on, He with me at all, all times. The time. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, how much time do I spend like? Focused yeah. on my relationship yeah. with God. That's a different That's story. A different That's a different story. story. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be chilling with him, you know, every 24-7. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Um, I, I would say I try to do 30 minutes a day, excluding Sundays, because I, I get that good hour or so, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm I'm in church or streaming or whatever the situation is. I'm not perfect with that. And my days, definitely, I can tell when I did not start my day that way because they usually kind of end up with me having a headache or something. Something goes wrong, and then I'm like, ah, my bad, God. Um, But I try to do at least 30 minutes of some form of um, devotion. So you're 30 at the start. I prefer it that way. Um, Days Because it it really, just like a good, I'm a morning workout person. I'm a morning devotional person because it really sets the tone for my day. I feel good like, oh, we out here accomplishing. Now I can go conquer the world. As opposed to the other way, now I feel like I'm scrambling to make time. Mm -hmm. I feel it. I'm I'm actually the opposite 
Um, I don't know why. Before I go to sleep, I like to do devotions and things of that nature. But I will say the morning has helped. I've, I've tried that before. Um, I don't know. Just sometimes I wake up late. Like I'm just like, ah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, like, dang. I woke up late. But I will say that um, setting a schedule to do that, even though, because he's a priority. Like, right. we make a schedule for our priorities. Mm -hmm. So it's like setting a schedule for that is very important. Mm -hmm. However, he's a spontaneous God. So sometimes I find myself, I could be doing anything, then mm -hmm. I'm in worship just like out of nowhere, like. Where did that come from? And that's my like time for the day. So now I'm in a season where it's not, it's like, I'm not really scheduling it. I'm just, it just happens sometimes. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at moment. now. Me too. Me too. Any, how many, oh, so I need an answer. How many hours? Mine I don't know. Six, <laughs> six to nine, six to nine plus. Six to nine plus a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's part -time I definitely job. avoided the question, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say probably I try to, you know, I get a little 20 in per day. Okay. I'll get 20 in three times. That's one hour plus the church hour. That's a two piece. Okay. You already above average. Then, <laughs> already. then, then I'm adding in another, another smaller assembly, you know, not a church Bible study, but a Bible study with the homies. Right. So we got one, and we be on there. Granted, I think there comes a point in our, like, homie Bible study where we start talking about, like, who's going to have a better season, LeBron James mm -hmm. or Kevin Durant. Fellowship. And that'll be three hours, but I'm, I think God you takes up a good hour. two. I oh. think it, he might, yeah. Two. Okay. Two. Okay. I yeah. like it. Yeah, so that, that's like a solid, I'm going to give myself five just off the strength of because. I think all of our answers, you know, went into there are times outside of the church hour or however long you spend in church that we spend time with God and try to be intentional about spending that time. And so I think it's a good segue into what we want our first topic to be for Sundays Ain't Enough, talking about Sundays not being enough. I mean, so what what do y'all think that that really means to you? What it means to me is that if I'm just relying on that one hour to combat all of life issues that I have to face during the week, I'm not going to have enough joy, enough strength, or whatever it is I need to muster through the week if I'm just relying on church service that one hour on Sunday. And I even think taking it less churchy, that Sunday not being enough to where God's integrated into your life, it doesn't even have to be focused on, oh, I was listening to you know, gospel music today, like even in listening to whatever you listen to, like knowing that God's still with you mm -hmm. and everything that you do. I even got my, my Jesus shirt on today. Yeah, get it, get it. See, but this is Jesus Shuttlesworth. However, Thank it's still me representing <laughs> Jesus in everything I got going on. So I think there's a lot of layers to things where you can add in, hey, let me go ahead and, you know, Pay for somebody's grocery date. That's some God stuff that you're doing right there, saying that Sunday just is, isn't enough. Um, yeah, Sunday's not being enough to me means getting the word on Sunday, but, you know, not doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that word should really wow. guide you to the scripture and, you know, certain points. Because, right. you know, Bishop, he has points. And those points, <laughs> they read, like, what? I, growing up, they didn't have that. But yeah, he has points like stuff that resonates with you that you can apply because that's what I think it's about. You got to you got to apply it. Absolutely. And then, you know, I think about when Darian said, you know, beyond just, you know, the church aspect, when we think plainly about God, you know, we're supposed to be building a relationship with him. Right. And so all of us have, you know, whether it's friendships, romantic relationships, whatever it is, we have those in our life. Right. And so depending on the relationship type requires more time than others. And so when you're trying to build a relationship with somebody, most times you're going to have to spend more than just an hour with that person. You know, you know, you're engaged or you're married or whatever, and you only talk to a pers that person for an hour a week, y'all's relationship is going to suffer at some point. Somebody's going to be unhappy or it's just not going to be growing together, growing stronger. So Sundays Ain't Enough can be interpreted as, you know, I just need to spend quality time 
with my Lord and Savior beyond just that hour or yeah. more in church. But I think it's back to what Darren said about his, you know, group of friends. They do Bible study. I think, I mean, that's the best part about, you know, throughout the week. You got people that you're close to that you can yeah. do life with, mm-hmm. but also um, talk about God and grow as well. So do you want to talk about those small groups? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I can do know, that real quick. <laughs> and um, it was really... The idea of one of my other friends back in Florida, and now he's out in Texas, and another one's in Michigan, and I'm out here in Virginia. And it was more so to hold himself accountable. I felt like he felt called and wasn't reading enough. So it's like, hey, I'm trying to read a certain amount. If we link up once a week and talk about what I wanted to read, it'll help me be more accountable because now just like, oh, I'll read it later. It's like, oh no, on Wednesday, we're going to talk about this. And if I don't have anything to say, it's obvious I didn't uphold my side of the bargain. So that's where we started. And then we just start inviting friends and family and whoever can make it. And sometimes people hold on, other times they show up and then they can't stay, but it's all in the spirit of making that effort And I think God honors that. And we have things that we pray about to make sure that we're all covered throughout the week. And like I said, I think those things like God sees and knows that in the right moments will be carried through because of these actions that we're taking on Wednesday nights. I have a group that I fast with on Tuesdays and it's from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And like we'll submit prayer requests to one another to like pray over. But again, like you all are saying, it's to hold us accountable. Yeah. And I'm also a part of a group called, well, part of a group, sound like a band or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say, everybody got names and stuff. I got to tell my Wednesday Bible study group, we got to yeah, come call up it, with a we name. We call it Wednesday Bible discussion, but it's hosted by my parent-in-laws because they, they have a church called Holy Nation. You know, we just, I think we read Matthew actually this past month. And yeah, things like that are really like beneficial and it helps us combat Sunday not being enough. So what are some other things we can do to combat Sunday not being enough? Let's talk yeah. about that. Um, I like to find books that kind of speak to seasons that I'm in. So I remember being in, and this is a whole other story, but I remember feeling like God wasn't hearing me or answering the prayers it, and I won't say he wasn't answering my prayers in the way that I thought he should. Mm, okay. I'll, so I'll, That's a I'll, I'll, That's a I'll put that mm-hmm. as an asterisk. I've seen him over there. Look <laughs> <like>. <laughs> um, and so I found this book called God, Where Are You? And it literally talks through that. And so I make I try to make a chapter a day of devotion. And then I'll pray based on what I read. Or some of the books sometimes come with where you can journal about what you just read. So I try and do stuff like that to help keep me focused. Because sometimes, I mean, yeah, sure, I'm going to church or, you know, listening to other people's sermons or whatever. But sometimes what they preach on isn't necessarily speaking to my specific season. So it's not that it was a waste of time because obviously I'm going to need that information that they just preached on. But I still need a little something to help me go through, you know, whatever I got going on. So I like to try and find books or other kinds of devotionals that speak to my specific season. Um, Combating Sunday not being enough. Um, Definitely doing something spiritually constructive on on Monday. (laughs) The day after Sunday, on Monday, because... I think it's a. It might be a culture thing. Everybody hates Mondays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's so bad about Mondays? It's like, <laughs> the first day of the work week. Oh, no. What's so bad about Mondays? I don't know, but definitely doing something on Monday because I sometimes I find myself on Monday just like uh, dragging. Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, gotta get up. Gotta do this. Gotta do this. Gotta do that. All on Monday after having a you know a good weekend, a relaxing weekend. So definitely doing something on Monday. That's gonna you know boost your energy. Yeah. What was what was your most recent uh, Monday boost? I fell off. It's okay. Now, I fell off on Monday. Yeah. But yeah. I can't remember. Hey. On some Mondays, I would go to the gym in the morning, mm-hmm. like and just release. Because I mean, I see the gym as worship. Like, I don't know if y'all know what I mean by that. But like working honoring out, honoring your temple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You know <laughs> honoring God <laughs> too. So I would I would go to the gym and then I would run a mile and then come back and read something or look. At a um, 
at a sermon or something like that. That that would be my Monday okay. mostly, but I've been really busy this past Monday, so it's kind of, I got to get back into it. You guys are looking at me with <laughs> conviction hey, eyes. No, no conviction. Just see it. here at all the cameras that we got. And Monday, we're going to ask you what you was on. Yep. I just set myself up. <laughs> this is your accountability. That Absolutely. is all that is, all that is about <laughs> to happen. Set myself up. <laughs> but no, nah, that's a good thing, too. I, I don't think I... I've struggled with it enough, but I haven't thought about it enough to where how your body, you know, being a temple and to where I've been grateful, you know, with sports injuries saying like, I'm grateful that I can walk. I'm grateful that I don't ache when I move. Like, I'm grateful for that sort of health, but also expanding on it. And then like, why well, I have the ability to walk. So let me run and let me take care of my heart. And those are things that if you keep those up, then you're able to go out into the community and do even more. So that's definitely part of it. And I think for for me, the hack I'm working with now, in the group, they started talking about the audio Bible, but I, I move it into some of the things like you were talking about of, you know, maybe using a sermon from somewhere and listening mm-hmm. to that. But I've changed my whole shower time. My showers <laughs> used to be for, you know, Thinking of ideas, right. and then you in there like, dang, like, what if there was a robot that could like carry out these tasks? Where you like, I'm done with that, with the random ideas. Shower time is now God's time; He can have it. So in there now, if there's some chapters we were supposed to read, mm-hmm. I let the audio Bible go Ooh, ahead and read through. So now I'm in the shower. I done cranked out. Are you truly 10, listening? I'm truly listening. Okay. I got to listen. Like, I'm definitely tuned in, but it also sparks to where, like, okay, I should probably go back and really read that portion. Because sometimes they tell you, like, oh, God spoke to Amalek and Nabilah, and they got to read all the names. I'll be like, all right, I'm waiting for the rest of- The Bible will humble you, okay? Yeah. They start reading all these names. I'm like, all right, tell me what happens after you tell me the who all was over there. Right. But, um, so yeah, shower time is now dedicated like that. to that where I add in maybe another sermon and that takes, you know, those 20, 25 minutes. Listen, now your I'm, water bill got to be sick. S- listen, forget it. You know, but God, you Jesus, pay, sacri- Jesus paid right, it all. Ulti- paid the ultimate price. Hey. So for me, hey. you know, renew your heart, your mind, mm-hmm. and your spirit. All at the same time, the and also get a little fresh. All, all the cleanliness. Clean. Get yes, all the sir. cleanliness. I like it. I like yes, sir. it. You know what That's I also good. do? Um, sometimes, because I don't, I do not keep my radio or my phone, whatever I'm playing music from, on gospel music, Christian music, whatever you want to call it, all day long. I do love to listen to music or just have it playing in the background, even if I'm, even if I'm at work. But sometimes in the morning, I'll get that feeling like if I didn't get to have a great devotional or if it it didn't speak to what I'm feeling that day I'll be like yeah I probably need to just turn on my little worship music and so I have a playlist and I'll turn that on or Pandora if I'm at work or whatever it is and just let that flow too and then for me a lot of times like you were saying you know it'll be a spontaneous moment where God's like pouring into you, talking to you or whatever, that's when a lot of my spontaneous moments happen because for me, God talks to me through, sometimes, through the music. And so when I when I think about, like, I'll be like, dang, the last three songs have had this message. And I'll be like, I see you, God. I, <laughs> back to back. I like when you do that. <laughs> and so that becomes another way for me to combat um, Sunday ain't Sunday not being enough because I'm able to still get that one on one time with God and sometimes uh, rap music just not cutting it. I need True. I need something inspirational. Yeah. Well, I have a Christian hip hop playlist mm. and it's really dope. I'm, I'm gonna let you to, uh, tag that. Put that yeah. in the uh-huh. yeah. In the I'm gonna comments. put it in the description. <laughs> Y'all tell me if it's fire. It's it's not lame. I'm telling you right now. I've actually, I've actually heard really great things from people about some Christian what? Um, yes. rap artists. Yes. I can't think of their names. And that's probably not good. It, it's okay. But I've heard great, great things. <laughs> it's so. okay if you don't know their names. Um, they're not like super famous, but yeah, they still get the point across. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So yeah, now we're gonna talk about some possible tips for you guys at home to combat Sunday not being enough, or if you just need more. So. Any tips, guys? Um, a tip I can offer, it would be 
something easy like YouTube. You can just simply type in gospel music or sermons. And when it comes up, if something sparks your interest, click on it and start from there. I will say some of these like sermon, um, what do you call it, thumbnails? Mm-hmm. They really interest me. Like mm-hmm. I just, I don't even know who it is. I'm just like, hold on. And it'd be something good. I'm mm-hmm. like, wow, that was amazing. Next thing you know, 30 <laughs> minutes to roll by. Right, and you, you're really listening. I, I've definitely, I wouldn't say the entire YouTube thumbnail, but sometimes the little reels on Instagram, and they hit you with the yes, one-liner. Yes. You'd be like, was that enough for today? <laughs> it might have been. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for them 15 minute, 15 seconds of word. Right. And I'm going to go carry on. They can just yes. do it so quick. That's good. Um, a tip I would... I would suggest is whatever you love to do, try to include God in it somehow, mm-hmm. somehow, some way. Little testimony. I um, I used to make. Well, I still make it. Music producer. I was a producer. I still am. Why do I keep speaking past this? <laughs> because you were, reg- you were a regular producer. Now thank you're you. a super producer. Thank- oh, so thank that's you. why you yes. keep talking he like that. Incorporated God. Boom. That's yes. Why. How do they know the story already? Yep, I incorporated God, and ever since then, I feel like my music has been flourishing. Then I became an artist, and I was doing secular music for a while, but then I was like, nah, I got to include God in this because, not because my music wasn't going anywhere, but because it felt, I felt empty. Hmm. Really, like when I make something, I'm just like, it's not doing it. It's not doing it for me. What am I talking about? So yeah, included God in that, and that's like a hobby I have with God. Like we have, we share a hobby. Right. So, yeah. and that goes kind of to what you were talking about about being in a relationship with somebody. Mm-hmm. Oh, how are you just supposed to? We get home and now we have a conversation. Like, no, y'all got something y'all enjoy together. Like, right. yeah. go make that happen. I guess another tip would be kind of towards Darian's earlier point about his how he started the Bible study group, but. Try and find friends, whether you already have that group of friends or other people that you meet from attending Bible studies or church or whatever it is, and start hanging out with them. I'm not saying that you have to hang out with them, and every time y'all hang out, it has to be, all right, we're reading Acts 5 today, you know, but it can be, you know, just even being amongst like-minded people can be encouraging. So you could be having the worst day, and then you get around them, and their energy or, you know, things that they say are inspiring or in, are encouraging, and it just kind of helps get you through that moment. And then sometimes y'all end up really talking about God, and, you know, that's always cool, too, when it's an easy-flowing conversation. You don't feel, you know, judged if you bring God into the conversation or, like, they're going to stop inviting you out if you, you know, talk about Christianity or anything like that. So, you know, just try and find a tribe of, of your own. Yeah. And um, especially with the pandemic, of course, we know coronavirus is out there. Is it still out we there? still in a pandemic. It's still out there. It's still out there, y'all. <laughs> Sam is not aware <laughs> that, that we're in a, a pandemic, joke. guys, because I, I don't know why. I'm just going to ask people sometimes, wait, is it still out there? We it's are been out there that long. Like, yeah. Yes. But yes, um, so it kind of moves into the next topic. Does the pandemic, you know, make this even more difficult? I will say no, because we have Zoom. We have, what is it, StreamYard? We have Uvu. Is Uvu still here? Oh, Uvu was Wait. so long ago. <laughs> yes. Don't. They probably I still exist. Like, <laughs> weren't you in <laughs> high school for that? <laughs> I was, yeah, I was. I was in like middle school, going uh, into high school. Oh, my gosh. Is Uvu still there? Can y'all like put that in the comments? We don't know. Yeah. It was Do free. you use it? Nobody uses it. It might still be there. There's no way anybody uses Uvu. it. Zoom kind of took their, took their Yeah, shine. they kind of took over. Oh, we got Skype. We got, oh, we got Instagram Live. Yeah. So, I mean, there's so we many ways. Fa- party FaceTime? Party. F- oh, that's true. You can FaceTime um, Android users now. I have not used that feature. Did I do not plan to use that feature. <laughs> you said you don't out. plan to They're use it? They are still out. out. Oh, my. Regular phone call me, please. Thanks. Dang, it's like that. Okay. So, with, being, with that being said, no, it doesn't make it hard. But if there's any struggles you guys have had, you know, since the pandemic has been here. Yeah. with Yeah. I mean, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think maybe if Sunday was all you had, it's probably difficult. But if you're doing some of the things that we're talking about or 
finding God and noticing God and other things that you do and making sure like, oh yeah, this is something like that builds a relationship. I think then you will be okay. And granted, you said like, are we still in a pandemic? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we are, but we back outside though. <laughs> so, outside. Like, so while Cautiously. you're outside, Cautiously. there's still like, now you can still go play basketball with your friends. There's a lot of things that are starting to happen. You can go out and have a drink. There's a lot. So you can start incorporating an actual in-person feeling where you're still maybe not around 2,000 people, but you could be around 20 and still get a slight feel. I think the start of the pandemic was a little difficult for me because, again, going back to where I started, that that was a kind of a tough season for me personally. And I realized how much I relied on being in church and that gathering. And so I, transparency wasn't spending. Now I still would, you know, pray and all that kind of stuff, but I wasn't being as intentional as consistently. And so I think that that's what also kind of fed into, you know, the season that I was in and where my mind was and how my energy and everything was. Um, But in Understanding that back in March 2020 and the first couple of months of the pandemic, it allowed me to now get to where I am now, where I am being more consistent about my time and finding other avenues to make sure that I'm still feeding my spirit, being with, you know, the word and everything like that. Um, and not just relying on the church, because I think ultimately that's what we keep saying is, yeah, the church is good. You know, that's necessary. But you've got to dig deeper than that, you know, for yourself also. I was the opposite when it came to the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, I immediately, like, I was just really on it, like, every day. I got to talk to God. I got to talk to God. It's, it's not safe out here. Like, I was I was scared at first. I didn't know what was going on. So that kind of brought me to a better, I guess, connection with him. Started to learn more and more about myself. I got hired in the pandemic. It was a lot of things happened, and um, I can say that was because I started to see myself. I started to see God more, learn more about Him. Can't have a relationship if you don't, you know, learn about the person. So true. So yeah, that's that's kind of what happened in the pandemic with me when it first hit. You said something like low key, but I think it's like really a big point that you were scared during the pandemic, and that pushed you to do those things. And I know we just talked about like a way to see how Sunday is not enough. And I think taking risk is a big part of that and not being ultra comfortable with where God has already put you, trying to go to the next level, knowing that not only is Sunday not enough, but for real, I'm not enough. And so I need God to do a whole lot right now Cause I just said, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z and I can't do, I'm not even that far down in the alphabet. And so I think that scare, that fear of taking a risk is something that can make sure like, bro, I need to call God today. Cause I'm not getting through this where if you're doing your basic one, two step, he he's already brought you through that anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's crazy. It's almost like fear pushes us closer to God. It should. should. It should. It it doesn't always do that, but in a way, I feel like it's designed to do that. The fear also adds into a level of trust. Because if you're scared, it's like, all right, well, I'm going to hit him up because I trust that he's going to carry through instead of like, I'm scared. Let me revert to something else that you trust more than God. Mm. Hmm. He about to preach, y'all. I about to say, I, got, <laughs> I heard like three mm's, and that's like the preach. millennial amen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, school of Ministry, MIT. I'm gonna stay here right now. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here right now. But we will put in recommendations. For yeah, you. I got you. I appreciate do that. They, I appreciate do they need a letter of recommendation? Letter of rec. I got mm-hmm. you. I'll write it. Um, Sam, like you were saying, you said it was fear for you that drove you closer to God. For myself. Mm-hmm. It was becoming complacent. It was like everything was starting to be a routine. Sundays I have church, Wednesday, if I can make it, Bible study. And then with the pandemic, 
you know, it was just all online. So I really started to become complacent, had everything in its routine. And so um, me and a friend initiated our fasting group on Tuesdays because it wasn't enough just to have Sundays. So when you fast, Kwamina, is it always, you know, food or do you kind of switch it up and maybe do social media sometimes or, you know? I think that's a great question because it's not always food. Um, sometimes it is fasting against social media, fasting against TV, um, fasting against the things that bring me pleasure, especially when I find myself leaning on them as a crutch. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm bored or I, I need something to soothe myself. Let me go here instead of God. That's when I'm like, okay, it's time to put that on the altar. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, Kwamina, see the same thing with social media. And Apple can definitely, you know, call you out on life. Uh, every week because they, you know, their new, one of their new features is where they tell you how much screen time you've had, you averaged over the last week. And my notification usually comes for whatever reason, Sunday morning, right after praise and worship, Bishop's about to get up and preach. And the, the notification is like, you averaged seven hours of screen time. It was up. 20% this week. And I'm, <laughs> I did not need that information. I didn't ask you to send me this information. And then, you know, so it becomes, then you're like, gosh, like that, that's a lot of time. And so it'll be, you know, a moment like that where I'm like, you know what, I need to focus more on my relationship or is that. And I feel like I'm running around here like a chicken with my head cut off and I need to be Recentered or refocused, and so then I'll get off social media for a while because I need to, you know, the next thirty days or the next however long, or because there's just something going on in my life that I need to really focus on, and I need that seven hours back. So see, but Apple cheats though because they send you those seven hours, and some of them could be productive, Absolutely. or some of them could be like God. They, they could be work calls doing, or the Bible I just told app. You, the Bible, the Bible app. app. You can be My YouTubing sermons hey, and all day listening long. Listening to podcasts. And now I've been screen time up four more hours, but there was all God hours though. So now how, how do you They feel? do cheat. Like only yeah. tell me the hours that I was on socials. Correct. Do that part. Now, if you tell me I was on social media for seven hours, we have a big issue. But I don't, I know that's not a case because I have time limits for that too. So. Well, I got hip to the, I guess the Instagram screen time. Like it'll tell mm -hmm. you. Like you have to get off and you can yeah. say yes or no, like right. ignore. I I was ignoring you. Asked, you asked 15, 15 <laughs> more minutes. In the social like, media. He asked for 15 <laughs> more minutes. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, gosh, okay. What am I doing? <laughs> but I mean, that's good. Um, fast and social media, definitely helpful. Mm -hmm. It it has helped me. Um, I've been fasting it on and off for like two to three years. Now I find myself sometimes just not even on it. Yeah. Like at all. I'd just be like, oh, I haven't been on Instagram in like three days. Yeah. People yeah. probably think I'm dead. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just crazy how fasting can work over time. And I think the opposite of a fast where because I'm on Instagram every day, I'm like, all right, I better open the Bible app for at least right. <laughs> 45 <laughs> seconds a day. I try to get that little streak number going crazy because I'm like, all right, if I could take the time. Darren's the cheating. How am I cheating? You only want it for your streak. It doesn't. Listen, <laughs> it doesn't. It, it kind of matters, but it doesn't matter. Like, I still did it. I still did it. And I could take the time to read the, the verse of the day. And who knows, like, the buildup, the accumulation of days upon days upon days of those little 15 seconds, open it up, quick read, is instilling something godly in me. To where I'm not even aware that a year from then I'm gonna use it. But you ain't even know it because the 15. I'll, so I'll take granted, yes. Could it be more? Of course. But it's not right now. He working on me. Yeah. I will say on that U version Bible, it's U version, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible app. Ain't nobody seeing me on the highlight section though. <laughs> Your highlight <laughs> number is highlight. crazy. <laughs> it is because I will forget where I was when I read that. I'll be like, you know what? The Bible's back to my highlights be like right here. I, yeah, I just, I have to highlight it. I need like two more highlights till I get the next badge. So I should probably highlight something today. I'm an expert. They got badges like 2K. So you like Hall of Fame. You know they didn't even know I highlighted that much. Like, wow. I am not a Bible app person. I have the app, but I, it's rare that I use it. I think I'm really born in the wrong decade. 
because I'm kind of old school. Like, give me a paper Bible yeah. and a yellow highlighter. Yellow. No, none of the other colors. My highlight well. game crazy. In the, you <laughs> gotta OJ take that exactly <laughs> that exact Bible. You can't go pick up nobody else's. No, Those no, highlights it's not very difficult. Transfer. Like, like if I'm do, if I do my devotional in my Bible and I highlight something, I like to read consecutively, right? So then if I go out of town and don't pack my Bible, it screws me up. Because where did I leave off? Mm-hmm. What chapter was the last chapter that I read? But now it's not. I, it's highlight worthy. <laughs> but I'm in my phone. But I need to highlight it. I mean, it's, it's it's a whole yeah. thing. It's a whole thing. But yeah, paperback is definitely old. a beast in old. itself. Well, I mean, you talking about old school? I don't know if y'all had this. Y'all let me know. My grandparents had the phone that had like the radio in the phone, so it sounded like speakerphone was on all day. What? And oh I think this goodness. was the cheat code or how they thought they could get to heaven or whatever it is. <laughs> But all day long, in a whisper tone from this phone, was somebody talking about, and the Lord said, once you come upon the place where you... Somebody's preaching. My grandma still they did. Yeah. The yeah. day yeah. Long. Yeah. That's the All day channel. long, coming yeah. out of the phone, was somebody preaching. I was like... It's just supposed to get you to the. <laughs> right. That's the cheat code. They getting the word all day. Because it goes yeah. into your subconscious mind. Like, yeah, I'm no, that's, you, true. Like, that's true. That's true. I just wanted to take it. I didn't even want to take a nap. I think that's why I couldn't take naps as a kid. They would send me up, go to go to bed, and I try to take a nap, and then hear some random preacher whispering through the phone. And yeah, I cannot yeah, say funny. I've heard a preacher whispering at me through the phone. I I cannot say that I'm that old school. That is, I've not. Ne- I want to witness that. You want to witness that? I, I do. That 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 system has now been taken out. I, my <laughs> my grandparents have. They are now Damn. in heaven. With Jesus. Oh, okay. They they up there okay. now. Yeah, so they're they gonna they gonna get it on hey. uh the heaven podcast, the heavenly Got podcast heavenly station. Yeah. They and they're gonna, the they gonna know about it. Yeah. <laughs> Guest star Jesus himself. Come mm-hmm. on now. I like it. All them up there listening. I like it. That is deep. Like I really do think that's the cheat code, man. If there was ever a cheat code to be in a better relationship with Jesus, it's to subconsciously listen to the word all day. Like but literally. that really is, that really probably is cheat code because like I can think of, you know, again, talking about relationship, I can think of times like I've been getting ready to do something dumb and I could hear my parents say, <laughs> Ooh. Yes. And so Ooh. I really think it's the same thing. Like, you know, I really should not be doing this right now. And the Lord be like, you know better than that. And then you, you got to kind of back away from it. So I really think it is like subconscious. And yeah. as you hear stuff and you learn more about God and the relationship and what you can, can't, what he wants you to, what he doesn't want you to do, yeah. it, it does become like that, you know, hey. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and, that's, and that's cool because a part of me thinks that's what he wants us to realize. Yeah. That if you, every single day, like every single day, like your decisions are going to change. Yeah. Your choices, the people you hang out with are going to change. Like that's happened to me drastically yeah. since... I graduated from college. The, my circle now mm-hmm. is like just way different. Some people might call them boring. Mm-hmm. They're not though. I love y'all. <laughs> They're not boring. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like it really changes how you view the world. Yeah. So. All right, guys. It's time to have some fun. We're gonna play this or that. Would you rather? And so I'm gonna ask y'all certain questions. I'm not gonna ask everybody the same question, but you got to tell me which you would rather do. Or have. All right. All right, Sam, you're first. Would you rather have the super strength of Samson or the wisdom of Solomon? Super strength of Samson. I got to be real. I'd rather have the wisdom. Mm. I'm already strong. Mm. (laughs) You can work on your strength. Yeah, I work on your strength. You can work on your strength. All right, Darian. Mm. Would you rather be cooped up in the ark for 377 days, taking care of animals all day, or lay on your side for 390 days? <laughs> you gave him a really you hard one. You gave me, like, <laughs> the, the choice of <laughs> that. Or that. Right? Bro, just put me on the ark and have me working all year long. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Kwamina, this one might be tough. Would you rather deceive your father into giving you your sibling's blessing or have your father believe you had been killed by a wild animal? 
Ooh, that is good. Let me think. Have him think. I think. I'd rather have him think I'm dead. <laughs> Why did you choose that? I chose that because the if I deceive him to give me the blessing of my sibling, I gotta live with that guilt. I know. I was that's thinking true. the same thing. Like yeah. that that's my character. Right. I I I, I would agree with you on you that. You can yeah. always come back and be like, I didn't die. Like, hey dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey dad. Hey, that, was, that, was, that was a good one. I know yeah. that's what they said, but I really didn't I'm here. die. I, yeah. I'm still here. True. All right, let me see. Darian. Ooh. Would you rather? Mm-hmm. Live through a famine or live through the 10 plagues of Egypt? Famine. You going you gonna to starve? Just, you yeah. just going to eat them locusts? I'm, bro, I do not want those plagues. I want no parts of those. So let me just go ahead with the with the one, the one. <laughs> the one <laughs> negative that's out there. I'm going to take the one. Okay. But I will say, mm, now that we talking about it, like the famine wasn't, I mean, the plagues, but I'm saying, right, the famine is for a longer period of time. Yeah, but like, I mean, sometimes seven years and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, again, I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't know how long these, these plagues were lasting, but. I feel like the plagues was like, at least hey, yo. I know it's 10. Right. They was here and it was like, boom, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another back, one. Back, back, right. Once you get to nine, you didn't, you, you're there. Right. You, you survived. <laughs> I made it. Make it have to nine. Famine and you're just going to be hungry. <laughs> Make it to nine. Maybe. All right. Kwamina, would you rather hide spies in your house or hide a baby from Pharaoh? What in the world, Kay? Spies. Reason why? Because that baby's gonna cry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Gonna get caught. scared to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> gonna need changing. Okay, Give it a spy. Be <laughs> be <laughs> Y'all be quiet. <laughs> Sam, would you rather watch Jesus heal a blind man or watch Jesus walk on water? You get all the good ones. I know. <laughs> I think walk on water. Not saying that, first of all, all of the miracles were amazing. But as far as, you know, which one was more underwhelming? It would be the Hill of Blind Man because I could already see. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I don't necessarily know what he's going through, but to see someone walk on water is just like, yeah. whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I picked. I got another one. I've got several. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to ask myself this one, but I want all of y'all to answer it too because it's, it's kind of deep. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Okay. This one is, would you rather... Betray Jesus or deny Jesus? Oh. Ooh. That's deep because they're kind of the same. That mm. is deep. Who denied Jesus? Peter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Judas and Judas betrayed him. Mm-hmm. Which side of the coin? Ah. You got to go first. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I, mm. I'm, I'm a little bit scared. I'm scared to do both. Let's be let's be clear. Mm-hmm. But doesn't the Bible say something about, you know, if you deny Jesus on earth, he going to deny you when it's time to go to heaven? Mm-hmm. And I feel like because of that, I'm going to have to default to then I got to betray him because then I maybe can go back and be like, hey, Jesus, this is what just happened. Please forgive me. But they told me I had to pick one. Yeah. Right. So I, I think I'm about default, default betray him. Just because I, I need to go to heaven. Yeah, of course. Wow. I hate to, I'll, I'll go next. I hate to go here, but I feel like we betrayed him before. So uh, I'd rather betray him. Listen, <laughs> we can't get right. I, I agree. We can't get right. Denying is just like, that's ah, that would hurt my You foot. don't know like, me. Oh, that hurt. No, nah, I don't. I mean, Peter was like, no, nah, I don't know. He did it three, three, times, what, three times. Three times. Bro, like, but we think. I mean, that was easy for him to do. It probably, probably was like took everything out of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but, yo, I'm going. I'm going. Deny. Why? I'm going deny. Granted, from their points of view, Judas was on betrayal for his own. And that, granted, God and Jesus, they they feel so like a uh, a denial will also hurt. But I feel like I'm not putting him in a in a predicament that is more a relationship hurt. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's something that I could better mend 
afterwards saying, hey, this is what I did. Here's why. Please forgive me. Instead of putting him in a situation, in a situation where now they get other people are affected. I'm going to say deny also. But Kim, what you touched on was very, um, very deep because that is the scripture. If we deny him, he said he will deny us before his father. Mm -hmm. And about the betrayal part, I even heard a sermon where someone was, was like, Judas did not have to kill himself because when Christ died on the cross, his, he paid it all. Yeah. He could have made recommends or recompense for betraying him, but to deny, but... Maybe because I have denied in the past, trying to fit in, mm -hmm. trying to not cause a riff, I can go mm -hmm. ahead and say I would deny him. So, I mean, as we're finishing up, I just want to encourage people to just, like, Nike says it all the time, but really <laughs> just do it. And don't, and don't think about falling off or if you're taking on too much. Take the action and let God do the rest of the work. And if it's not right, he'll change you into another spot that does work. But you got to start. Yeah, that's good, Darian. I would definitely kind of just piggyback on that. You know, we talked today about Sunday ain't enough. And it honestly is not for you, me, or whoever, you know, is watching this podcast. So I would just encourage you to find what helps, you know, bridge the gap between Sunday and Sunday. And, you know, really hone in on that. And don't worry about if you fall off or become inconsistent or f miss some days. You know, just get back up and try again and just keep trying until, you know, you find what works for you. My final thought for the day would be to include God in the things you love to do and just watch how it flourishes. My final thought is about cultivating a relationship. You can't cultivate a relationship in just one hour. So definitely Get to know them, read your Bible, use other avenues, apps, YouTube, because Sunday isn't enough. So thank you guys for tuning in with us today. Make sure you tune in next week on our next episode, which is, Is College Worth It? We're going to let you know if it's really worth it. Bye. Peace. You know, I like what he said, and it's kind of moving us into our next topic. Um, what is it? What was our topic? Oh man, it's cut this! Yeah, I, was, I, was, I think that was I think it? that everybody's answers do kind of bring us um, to our next topic or our first topic. Hey guys, we are screwing this yeah, part up. It says, "Explain <laughs> what Sunday ain't enough means to each of us." So, with that being said, we want to talk about some possible tips for you for you hold on <laughs> for you you and you I was looking at that one hold on you get a tip you get a tip <laughs> alright here we go that you know for yourself also um I forgot what I was gonna say <laughs> I really had something too alright I, I had some good thank god this is you gonna be doing some mean edits thank god this ain't live as long as it sounds synced up I'm good just Mm -hmm. Lift that right up out of there. Um, we'll lift our hands in the sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs>